Yeah. If you'll sit right. here and talk to them here, tell them yeah. to publish it. We'll be able to watch you all well. Yeah. Why yeah. publish a bad book? Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. You'll see them when it comes out. It'll ding and all that. Well, I think we're very good. I don't know this. Nomadical person, what do you call that? Adrian, Adrian, okay. Adrian and, uh, yeah. I was, I've found a few things. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. In the right place. There he is. Uh, no, just being precaution, trying to keep them getting sick. They're trying to, trying to keep them sure. From what? I, they did tell me that I uh, did have a flu virus. Can I give the number to somebody? Yeah. Trying to keep them sure. I appreciate that. That's what I mean. It's the kind of guy I know you are. <laughs> Okay, I'll do it right now. Bruce, have you met Nancy? No, I have not met Nancy. Hi. Hi, Bruce Wayner. Nice to meet you, Bruce. Thank you. We met. We, we did. I'm not very memorable, though, Tom. <laughs> very briefly, we met one day. All right. Bruce, this is Nate Schultz over here. And it's, no, we met earlier. Met earlier. We were trying to figure out, well, at least I was trying to figure out how I already knew him. But. <laughs> Well, I, I probably saw him in a Batman suit a long time ago. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Which one of you were wearing? <laughs> Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne. Yeah, I wish I had a dollar for every time that's happened in my life. The other thing, just like Josh was talking about the other day when we introduce ourselves, we kind of like mumble through the name and yeah, what we do. Time. Well, that's what happens when I say, I'm hey, hi, John. Last How are we? Hey, can you see me? I can see you. Can, can you see me? Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's right. Right. We're, running, we're running a little bit late, so just hang loose. Yeah, no problem. Where are you? Darlington. I'm at home. You're in the capital so, Yep, yep. yep. You need me to come back in five minutes? What do you think? Five minutes. Okay, I'm just going to leave it up. I'll be back. All right. Who's Adrian? Where's Rich? Take care. They go in the wrong room. It's easy to get lost. It, we had a different entrance. It's like yeah, I didn't know how to get here. <laughs> I'm still not sure I'm coming the best way. But <laughs> Coming in that, that's really the first time you came in that, that in? Yeah. That's what happened within the past month? Oh, no, it's been up there a while. When was the last time you were here? You weren't here. Oh, I wasn't here. 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 Weren't you in charge of me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Time flies. I can't forget. This is January. Is this our first one of the year? This is the last one? Yeah. Oh, the last one's in like November because we did the December one. Yeah, that's, that's right. what it was. That's right. So, yeah. I guess oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. we did the dinner. We year. did the dinner last time. Yeah. I keep looking in the mail to try to make that gray right hair. It's just not my look. What do you think? Okay. Time flying by. I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to get in my car. 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 It's funny, that's kind of like hey, hey, I have her money that she's got no value from it <laughs> now, but I think next week I'm going to I'm going to find a chair. Jamie, nice to meet you. Nancy and I kind of had the same situation. Okay. We, we worked together a long time before we met each other. Hey, you're over here. Let's see. Let's try one. Too much. 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 Too much.
Yeah. Looks like we got a crowd now. Yeah, we're getting together here. All right, let me have your cake, please. I is John Gardner from Darlington, South Carolina. We met through the People's Network. He's got an amazing story. But what we're going to focus on today is your experience oh, in alternative sorry. cancer treatment. Right, John? That's correct. Uh, so, Darlington, the NASCAR raceway, right where the cars just go round and round. They just go and turn left, as you say. <laughs> so, so, anyhow, John married up. Elizabeth has been a great blessing Absolutely. to you. Absolutely. Had a beautiful daughter, Peyton. Peyton's married now, right? Peyton's married and in Charlotte and doing well. And Bryant is. um. Here in town, running his own small business and own city council here. So a quick story on John, uh, former state representative, third generation uh, attorney, legal office, two story. You're thinking when you think, I remember him, but you know, John was standing in his office one day in the doorway between him and the secretary, and a trash truck had come loose at the top of the hill. Crashed into the office and killed the secretary. Oh my God. He survived. So God said, "I've still got a plan, plan for you." He just, you know, it's hard to imagine those kind of things. Then he uh, he married up, and uh, so uh, without getting into too many personal <laughs> personal. I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch to a funny story, Tom. We were in um we were in Las Vegas together, Tom and I and Elizabeth, and um. I hadn't known Tom a long time, but y'all know he's a runner. And um, Tom and I went out running one morning, told Elizabeth we'd meet her for breakfast. So we we came back in and um, uh, I just, um, just started running. And uh, we got back to the table with Elizabeth and Tom looked up at Elizabeth and said, Elizabeth, John absolutely wore me out this morning. And Elizabeth looked up in absolute surprise, and Tom finished. He said, yeah, all that stopping and starting. Just <laughs> 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 a lot of truth to that. So um, all that stopping and starting. Um, so here's my story. Wait, wait a minute. I want to tell the chicken soup story first. Go right ahead. So we got to know John, got in, but you know, Mark Victor Hanson was in, came and spoke to my mastermind group one time before Chicken Soup, and we became friends. He asked me to do Chicken Soup for Entrepreneur Soul. Of course, I, I would have paid them to do it. It was that powerful. And so um, I called Jack Canfield, and I said, Jack, I'd like to have uh, John and Elizabeth be co authors on Chicken Soup for Entrepreneur Soul. And Jack said, well, we already got a couple on there. I don't think you know, I don't think you will be fast. So I said, okay. In the meantime, I'd written this book called The Name for Summit, and then John and Elizabeth John and Elizabeth uh, did some editing, and so they were, they were on the book, and their pictures on the back of the book. And so we bought, we uh, printed 10,000 copies. John lived in Darlington, we lived in San Luis Obey, and I drove to Nashville to meet John and Elizabeth. To get him 5,000 copies of the book, giving me new hauls over the book. We're driving up to the hotel to meet them in Nashville, Tennessee, and my cell phone rang. <clears throat> and it was Jack Kenfield. And he said, Tom, I got news for you. Decided to let John and Elizabeth pull off the chicken soup. We went and cried and laughed. <laughs> when we settled down, we looked at our calendar. It was 24 hours and 18 months. From the time he made his request, one G curve by 24. One curve. And so they're they're on the uh, chicken soup down for no soul. So anyhow, it's been a great journey, hasn't it, John? It has been a great journey, Tom. It has been a great journey. Yeah. So let's talk about your health. Let's start with the All right. 
Um, well, I, I lived a relatively healthy lifestyle. I walked um, religiously 10, 12,000 steps a day. So it's not as healthy as Tom, but um, that's still, I, I wasn't sitting around any. And um, my next swole up, uh, I reckon it was in um, May sometime, and went to the doctor. And bottom line, he told me I had a stuck up saliva gland, drink plenty of water, three liters of water a day, and eat lemons. And after a couple of months, and nothing had happened. He sent me for what he thought was a routine um, CT scan and set an appointment for two weeks later to go over the results with me. And I had no longer gotten home. Then I got this call and it was this cold. Um, John, you have an aggressive form of squamous cell carcinoma. This was on a Tuesday afternoon. I schedule your surgery for Thursday morning and we'll follow it up with radiation and chemotherapy. And I said, I said, wait a minute. I'd really like to talk about what the options are here and what I should expect. I mean, it was just that cold. You've got an aggressive form of squamous cell carcinoma and I scheduled the surgery for Thursday morning, less than 48 hours from now. And so, that was at the ear, nose, and throat guy. And I called up my doctor and I went in to see him. I, I said, I want you to explain to me what this CT scan is saying. And he said, John, the best I can tell you is that hell will not describe the next six months for you. And to make a long story short, the treatment plan is normally to go in and they was going to start with my tonsils, but probably would proceed to my tongue and throat voice box and cut them out. Um, I'd lose my teeth with the radiation um, and be eaten through a tube. Um, and for somebody who kind of speaks for a living and likes to talk, <laughs> Uh, that, that really wasn't an option for me. Um, and as I asked around, there was nobody who had gone through the normal treatment plan in the U S that ever would go through it again. And as I learned later, the people who were doing it down at MUSC, every single one of the doctors has said they'd never go through what they do to people. Um, if they ever got that diagnosis. As it turns out, I was very lucky. I had had um, two friends, one with prostate cancer that had um, metastasized to his back, stage four prostate cancer, that had been cured some nine years ago at the Rubio Cancer Clinic. And another one, um, Russell Peden, who had had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma that had spread to his brain, who had been cured, and I use the word cured, four years ago. So <clears throat> I called them up, found out about the Rubio Cancer Clinic. What they use is they take your own blood, they spin up your stem cells from your own blood, um, they effectively teach them how to recognize the cancer cells and they reintroduce them to you. So um, I went down to Tijuana. It was, he used to practice in San Diego and when Bush banned all the um, stem cell research because of they were doing them out of aborted fetuses or something way back when. Um, but he uses your own blood, so there's no rejection or anything like that. So he just moved it literally across the line from San Diego into Tijuana. He still lives in San Diego. And um, set up a little hospital there. Um, and I went there for six weeks. Um, my mass was seven and a half centimeters, I reckon, when I went. 
Um, and six weeks later, it was 1.2. It gone from 7.5 to 1.2, which I am told is miraculous. Um, I'm five months in now. Uh, cancer number started 100. When I went there, I was at 89. I just came back this past week. I went for a four-day follow-up, um, and I'm at 21. Anything below 20 is in remission, so I expect when I go back in a couple of months for a follow-up of about four days uh, that I'll be in remission and fully expect it to go down to zero. Um, what they use is a combination of stem cells, um, cancer vaccines, um, which are uh, best I can describe are T cells, which have been taught to recognize the cancer cells. That's one of the problems is your immune system can't recognize the, um, the cancer cells. They do things that are, it seems to me, common sense. They're very, they detox you um, a lot so that your immune system can focus on the cancer. So they use everything from um, electrolytes to collation to rise therapy to, I wrote some of these down, make sure I didn't forget them, um, lymphonic foot baths, um, some things you might not like, enemas. Um, they do use, I had um, three or four organic chemo treatments, um, whatever that is. I had five low dose radiation treatments. Now those were their one tenth the dose of what you'd get in America. And I only had five of them um, over six weeks. So um, obviously I um, have kept most of my hair. Um, <laughs> it didn't, uh, in fact, it's growing back thicker now than it was beforehand. Um, and because the stem cells, Re, um, they revitalize your organs. And so some of my hair is coming back, color it was when I was 18. Sort of interesting um, going through that process. Um, I think everybody has to make their own decision about, you know, if they or a friend get cancer. Um, this seems to be so far advanced over what we have in America, it's unbelievable. Um, I think the FDA and the pharmaceutical companies, you know, it's hard to patent your own stem cells, so it's hard for them to figure out a way to make money with it. But you'll hear, and we have heard recently, they were all a few about a little girl that as a last resort, I would tell you after they'd used up a million to a million and a half dollars of insurance, as a last resort, they gave her stem cells for $470,000 and that cured her cancer. Um, so uh, I'm sort of, um, you know, it's, it's amazing how when I got back, my doctor, my regular doctor told me that he has a thoracic surgeon that's a friend that's been going to China for 20 years. Said when he started in China um, with the, he's a heart surgeon, um, he was a rock star 20 years ago. He said now he's hardly a nurse's assistant. They're that far advanced, both in machinery and in procedures. Um, and I found that um, to be the case with um, what I went through. When I went in for radi radiation, for instance, the first time, signed me in John Gardner. And as soon as she read my name out that I'd written down, the doctor came out, the doctor walked me back, the doctor did the radiation, and the doctor walked me out, total of 10 minutes. Um, I wasn't there more than eight minutes after that. I'd walk in, go back to this modern machine, they do the work, walk me out um so uh kind of fascinating in that um there are a lot of um amish and mennonites there uh i think they consider it um natural more natural medicine um 
for everything from Lyme disease to obviously to cancer. Um, they are doing some stem cells with joint um, therapy now. Um, and they're using, some of them use bone marrow and that's, I mean, if they try to dig bone marrow out with a hand drill, run, um, because that's what they do at some clinics. I mean, that's just the most antiquated, painful method in the world. Um, but they can use your own um, stem cells now. And you're hearing about stem cell shots in your knee. I've got a person I go to church with that her knee, basically she couldn't be very athletic. And um, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield had approved the $100,000 knee replacement would not approve the stem cell shot. She went in and got the stem cell shot in her knee and two weeks later walked seven and a half miles down on the Florida Keys. So um, they are, uh, I had a knee that sort of swole up when I get around 12, 15,000 steps in a day. But generally just from the other stem cells in my, that were aimed at my neck, um, uh, it solved my knee problem, solved my knee problem as well, which is kind of interesting. So any questions um, from anybody? I'll be glad to give you the contact information so you'll just have it in the future and you're welcome to call me back um, as well. Don, Tom? Do you mind sharing a little bit about the cost and the insurance? Yep, yep. Um, they're, they don't take insurance. Um, the cost is seven thousand dollars a week um some people the regimens are all different depending on what you have some people go down there for three weeks some four weeks um i was down there six weeks i wrote them a check for seven thousand dollars every monday you can put it on a credit card um take cash i reckon if you, if you want to take cash um the mexican government understands um, the uh, medical tourism. There is literally, when you're coming back from Tijuana, there's literally a medical line and you get in that line and bypass almost all the traffic coming out of the country. Um, Cause they know you're bringing um, uh, money into the country. Um, so, and I come home with a, $7,000 pack of, I just pack it in my suitcase. Um, and they're like, I presume, di I'm, not, I'm not diabetic, but I presume like diabetic needles that have my stem cells and T cells and the vaccine in it, um, 60 or 70 shots. Um, and that pack, which lasts six, eight weeks, um, is $7,000 that I come home with to continue to push my numbers down. Um, but I have had no pain, um, no side effects that I'm aware of other than my knee seems to be do, doing a lot better. Um, and my hair's um, uh, turning away from gray to a color. So um, other than that, um, but everybody's a little bit different. Um, All right, so if somebody wants to reach out, what do you do, John? Who do you need to call? There are several things. My telephone number first, 843-60-0488. Um, the... Can you repeat that? Repeat it. Did you get that? No, repeat it. Eight four three two six zero zero four eight eight. Now, the name of the patient advocate at the Rubio Cancer Clinic clinic is Carolyn. Gross, G R O S S. Now, okay. um, her telephone number is 
760-552. No, excuse me. 532-2762. Let me repeat that. 760 532 2762. Um, is, is that in San Diego? Um, San Diego? Yes, that's a San Diego number. She's in San Diego. You fly into San Diego. Um, after the first six weeks, I came home for six or eight weeks. Went back for four days, um, came home for another, I think, eight weeks that time. Went back for four days. I fly in on Sunday, stay in a hotel Monday morning. They pick you up. You fast Monday morning so they can draw your blood. Um, and uh, they pick you up, run you directly across into Tijuana and um, drop you off at the hospital. So I had no idea that Tijuana is a city of two million people. So, I mean, it has a little bit of everything in it. Don't think it's the normal. I mean, you know, you've gone across into a third world country, but there's some really nice stuff there. If you had never spent any time there. So, um, well, the $7,000 included lodging and food. It includes the rooms are, um, it has a hospital bed in the room, a queen bed, um, a little refrigerator, um, coffee machine and full bath um, in the room. So when I went down, it's room and board for, is, if you bring your children, it includes their room and board. Because um, some of the Mennonites and Amish do bring their children. Um, and so it includes all your costs. Now, I say all your costs. If you have a MRI or a CT scan while you're there, um, that cost could run $400 to $800. That's the only cost other than the $7,000. Now, if you want to, you can go out and eat. They, they serve organic there. They um, obviously um, urge you to go organic. Um, I came home and I felt guilty um, I took every bit of processed food I had out and gave it to my son. Um, <laughs> I was guilty giving, giving it to him, but didn't want to throw it away. Um, I don't have a lot of discipline, so I just put went out and got all the organic food, and that's all we have in the house. Um, you learn to um, – I use a, a heavy vegematic, do some juicing, not much. Um, but some juicing um, to um, here. So I, I think the big thing for me was that my options, I, I didn't really have an option in my mind. In my mind, losing all my teeth and potentially my tongue and my voice box wasn't an option for me. And I had two friends who had been cured at this place. Other people have different options depending on what they're faced with. Um, but he takes most of the problems as a um, immune system disorder and inflammation. And it seemed, he seems to be dead on with it. I mean, we heard miraculous story after miraculous story after miraculous story while you're down there. Um, some of these, um, Amish and Mennonite folks are third and fourth generation going down. Um, that, you know, their father was there 20 years ago, or they had somebody in their community there 15 years ago. Um, so, I mean, you just hear all kind of, of, um, of miraculous stories, but you know, they're, you know, they're not going to work all the time. A lot of the people that are going there now, this has been kind of, this is an interesting part. And then I'll let y'all go, Tom. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to 
answer any questions, but I don't want to hold you up. Um, many of the hospitals now, they don't want you to die at the hospital because that ruins the hospital rating. So when they, when you leave, they tell you, do not come back here. There's nothing else we can do for you. We do not want, I mean, they're very clear about it. We do not want to see you come through our doors again. And just as clear as the guy was to me when he called me and said, John, you've got an aggressive form of squamous cell carcinoma. I mean, he wasn't trying to make it easy. We're, we're ready to cut on you and start cutting, poisoning, and uh, burning Thursday morning. Um, the, the hospitals have gotten that way. So many of these people are coming in. They're on their last this is their last hope because nobody else will accept them because they don't want, they don't want them to die on their watch. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what does your doctor say now about the progress that you've made? Ah, I walked back in. <laughs> he thought I was a ghost. <laughs> and um, uh, his nurse, I've been going there for 25, 30 years. So he kind of looked at me a little bit and I walked in and I was weak the first time I walked in. And he hesitatingly said, John, can I take your blood? I said, absolutely. You can have as much of it as you want. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'd been told to check in because your immune system, even though they've been pumping you full of this stuff, is still a little weak. I don't want you going around a bunch of people. I want you checking in with your doctor. So he took my blood and I went back two weeks later. He says, you know, I cannot believe how good your blood looks. I mean, it's perfect. Um, so, and this would have been eight weeks after I was diagnosed. So, I mean, he said it just looks perfect. Um, and I mean, it wasn't quarter size, but it was almost quarter size outside of my neck eight weeks, eight weeks earlier. And so um, it was at that point that his nurse told me that her father had died of the same thing. And when she saw the diagnosis, she was scared to death um, because he had lived 11 months and he told her that had he known what they were going to put him through, that he'd have never gone through the treatment. My pharmacist told me the same thing. Uh, my son-in-law's aunt is an ear, nose, throat doctor at MUSC Medical University in South Carolina. And every one of those doctors to the T says they'd never go through the treatment they give. Um, after I went back to my doctor, is when he told me about this other doctor who was the heart surgeon who had been going to China. Um, and I understand they do some of this in Switzerland and in Austria. Um, but I just knew about it from my friends um, in Mexico. So he is, a, he is a true believer now. He has referred one person to me since, since I got back. Yes, sir. Ken, I have a, my cousin is on the final stages of cancer and they've shuffled him around from um, one cancer clinic to another. Do you mind if I have them call you? Be glad to. Be glad to. Um, yes, okay. ma'am. What was the name of the clinic again? Rubio, R-U-B-I-O Cancer Center. I believe that's how you can look it up on the web. Rubio okay. Cancer Center. Any? John, I don't care what Linda says behind your back. You're a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. And um, when you call Carolyn, it's normally by referral in there. Just to tell them I told you about it, John Gardner. And um, now she's a little just to understand she's a little pushy. She's a patient advocate, but she believes in what she does. There's no perfect place. Um, so it's different for everybody. And, and people come in, as you say, at very different stages. 
Some of them are saved right at the end. Um, but some of them are, are, you know, just too late when they get a hold to them. Um, but uh, it's an amazing, amazing place, and it's some amazing stories from there. So feel you've free lived, to. You've lived it. I've lived it. Yep. Ab right. Absolutely, I've lived it. So thank you all for your time. Um, what did you say, Tom? Thank you. Thank you. God bless. God bless. God bless. I'll See you later. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Made it. Yeah, absolutely. It's said at the same time. I've got a former employee that did the same thing. She's diagnosed with cancer. She's out of her body.